Hi guys. Well, it is a nasty, a just an absolute disgusting, depressing. It is a Saturday evening here in the end times at Bugs in a Jar Farm, where I have managed to drive away all of my uh, tourists tonight. So, uh, since it is Saturday, I am thrilled to bring our first guest on to the, the Saturday Alien Show or my new Alien and Doomers channel. So, we're going to welcome a fellow Doomer who has actually, according to this man, had a conversation with someone from another planet. So, uh, and if anybody else there wants to come on here and share their stories, feel free to contact me and we can probably make that happen. But without further ado, since we're pinched for time, uh, I want to introduce my uh, good buddy, Doomer friend, uh, Tyler. So Tyler, come on and say hi to the guys and tell us the story of how you spoke to a man from another planet. Hi, how's, it, how's everybody doing? My name is Tyler, and um, I will preface this story by telling you that I did have a an, an visual encounter with a flying saucer when I was 17 years old. And I've told Sam about that before, and I want to put that into the story because I saw that as an innocent young man, and that allowed me to be open to what happened in, at a later date. Secondly, I would like to say that I'm 78 years old, uh, so I'm not a young guy running around, and I've had a lifetime of experience. And uh, this is how the story goes. Uh, I was a university student. It was around 1965, somewhere around there. And um, I was not a science student. And I was happened to be sitting in the garden square of the university with about five other people on a big blanket on the ground. And we were talking about transportation because Japan had just established what they call the Shinkansen, which is their super trains. And so we were talking about the future of super trains for America and the fact that we felt that America needed that kind of system as we were de as we developed into the future. And the, so the year was 1964, and we're sitting there discussing transportation in America going into the future and what could be possible. And people were bringing up different theories and ideas about how to transport people around the planet. As we were speaking, suddenly, without any kind of introduction or notification, suddenly, from my perspective, all the other, all the five people that I was talking to in this circle on this blanket, suddenly froze into place, and time stood still. And I found myself literally in an experience of time not moving, and I didn't know what was happening. And I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned around and looked up, and there was a gentleman that was probably about five foot, five feet, two inches tall, three inches tall. He was kind of portly, but in good shape. He was bald. And he was extremely pleasant. And he said to me, child, <laughs> you don't understand anything about transportation at all. The only appropriate kind of transportation in this universe is teleportation. And when he was saying that, I was very aware that nothing around me was moving at all. And that actually some of what I was talking to still had their hand in the air. And at that point, I realized that I must be talking to somebody from some other dimension. I'm not saying they were from another planet, but they were definitely from some either another planet or dimension that 
I that that the human beings I knew didn't don't, didn't have access to. And then he began to explain to me, and I said to him, well, what in the hell is that? And he began to explain it to me, and I will try to tell you as much as I can remember after over 60, almost 60 years, and the fact that I also did, did not, and to this day, did not understand a lot about science. And this is what he told me, to the best of my ability that everything in the universe has a geometrical pattern to it that is created out of out of six-sided figures that move in infinite directions and that the, and that these geometric patterns are found in everything from the single cell all the way up to the structure of the universe itself and that these these six-sided geometrical figures were not geometry in the typical sense that we think about it, but they were they were energy formations, and that the energy formations themselves were also um, that information and energy were the same thing. So that when he was talking about these structures being built, what he was telling me is that everything that I perceived as matter or as wavelengths was not only just energy as a source, but it was also information at the same time. So that in order for me to think about transportation, one had to think about the fact that it's not a body that's moving or it's not a consciousness that's moving. It's just pure information in an energy form that's transforming and moving. And that when one thing moves from one place to another, it's not actually going anywhere. It's just changing its relationship with the other energy forms around it. And then he said to me, I want you to understand this. I knew nothing about black holes at that time. I'd never heard of a black hole in my life. But he explained to me the nature of black holes and the nature of an event horizon in which everything in time and space goes into the black hole and that in that black hole a certain kind of transformation takes place and he said these he said that the entire universe is made out of black holes they're not only the ones that we may or may not perceive with a telescope but that every piece of matter has a black hole and then he said to me every cell in your body has at its center the same black hole that the entire universe has. So he says the way that you go into teletransportation is that you learn how to manu manu manipulate these hex hexagonal forms of energy and you enter into a black hole in the center of one of your own cells and from there you move through that but you need to know where you're going. You also you already have to be at the level of um, evolution that you understand where you are and where you want to go, but that you actually travel through your own cell, through one of your own cells, to wherever you want to go, and you re you recreate yourself in whatever form of information you want in order to be able to experience or communicate with that that um, environment or piece of the universe that you're traveling to, and so that that's the basic well, idea that he conveyed to me. Well, that was a a, a major download. Uh, so. We, there's there's no way we can keep expanding upon this theory as as fascinating as it sounds. But I I just wanted to just briefly, since we've got five and a half minutes left before we got to shut this down, before we go into a black hole. I uh, did you ask the man where did you come from and how did you arrive at this information? Uh, yes, I did. And his response. He laughed. <laughs> I bet he did. 
He began to laugh, and he said, your child. That's how, he started the conversation by calling me a child, uh, and when I asked him that, he he laughed. He, he didn't laugh at me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was a very pleasant experience. He uh, laughed, and, and, and I didn't laugh because I, I was totally stupefied. I bet. But, but when he laughed, it was actually a very pleasant experience for me, and when he said it, I was a child, I felt completely like a child, yeah. and I was very happy to be a child because he was teaching me something I didn't know. Well, I wish I had had the conversation, so, but you do believe that he was not just a normal human uh, walking across the the campus who overheard your conversation and decided he was going to have some fun with you. You, you. you do believe that he was either from another planet or another dimension. You, to this day, you believe that. Uh, I don't believe anything. I, I only experience life. I'm, I'm too old to believe things. I've had too many life experiences to believe anything. I, so I, I'm getting I there myself, yes. Uh, I, I, only have, I only have life experiences, and the ones that I can remember are the ones that, are the, are, are the ones that I experience most fully. And this is one of the more cool uh, experiences that I've had in my life. I imagine it was, Tyler, so... So what happened? He just walked off, and then time resumed, and your friends became, became reanimated, and they had no knowledge that that man had been there and had that conversation with you. That's a fairly accurate description, except it's a little. It's a, from my from my experience, it's a little better than that. I watched him start to walk away, yeah. and he suddenly disappeared, and he suddenly disappeared. After about three steps, it was just gone. And that, for me, was quite an experience. Well, that sounds interdimensional to me. And then at that point, your friends just, quote, came well, back then, to life? And Well, well that's what's so interesting about it. Because it, what was required was for me to turn around and, and sit there and expect the conversation did not resume until I turned around after seeing him disappear and then look at all the people who were frozen and then thinking what comes next. And as soon as I thought what comes next, then the, whoever was speaking said the next word in the sense of, that he was speaking before it yeah, started. Yeah. And I re and I when he was staying and it was as if that whole thing never happened. So they had no... And I tried to tell them what happened, and they laughed at me. They were so insulting to me that I got up and left. Yeah. And obviously, Tyler, we need to know it was 1965, and you were a university student. What drugs were in your system at that, in right. that conversation? I, I actually meant to explain that in the beginning. You got one minute. But I'll tell you now. I... I, I was a, um, I'm not even sure what it's called anymore, it's been so long, but I, w I was getting the highest grades that one can possibly get in a university, and I was, so I was one of the highest scholars in my school, and not only that, I was a water polo player and a, um, a national a swimming, not a champion, but I, I was a competitor in national swimming meet. So I was an athlete and a scholar. So you were, no, at, at that time. point, you were stone sober during that, no? I uh, I was stone sober. I didn't even drink. Okay, at that at, at, at that point, because I know you've, <laughs> I right. know you've had some no, other, not, anyway, I, I would, uh, we have got to shut this down, but anybody wants to leave a comment, we'd love to hear it, and maybe we can bring Tyler back on the show, but I got to go now before the aliens take us away. So thank you, Tyler. <laughs> Bye, guys. You, you're very welcome. Bye-bye.